America in Another World. Chapter 109, A Ray of Hope Part 1. Written by Ron the Black Cat. 1610 June 18, 2020 CE. San Jose International Airport, Forward Operating Base. Eric stood among his platoon listening to Second Lieutenant Ryan Scottfield as he gave them a more detailed briefing than Captain Martinez. We will be deployed to defend whatever parts of Interstate 280 that are still being held in San Francisco. We will be backed up by 3rd Platoon. An anti-armor squad, a tow squad, and a heavy machine gun section will be joining us as well. It seems like the LAV-25s just got here on time so we may have them at our disposal. Private First Class Gregor Edwards, a grenadier in his squad, looked at Ryan with questioning eyes. Didn't the captain say we will be facing demons that can throw hums? Yep. So that will be all our forces? Yep. Other than disorganized local law enforcement and guardsmen, yes. First platoon will be busy securing the evacuation sites in the City College of San Francisco. As the captain said, Fox Company will be keeping our rear together so we can get the heck out if things go to hell. What about Golf Company? They got sent to East Bay cause those things are over there as well. Any other questions? Everybody stayed silent. Ryan sighed. I know that this is the first time some of you have had odds so stacked against you. Some of you haven't even seen combat before. But just like how good old Chesty, who once commanded our specific battalion, once said about communists, we are first marines and not all the demons in hell can overrun us. Ura. Let's make him proud boys. Interstate 280, San Francisco. We got these monsters nearing Monterey Boulevard. I want all officers to defend that street. Do not let a single one onto the highway. Andrew tapped Terry on his shoulder. You hear that? I think that's our cue. Come on. As Andrew and Terry got closer to the on-ramp, the sound of rifle fire got louder. They had to weave and squeeze through the cars that were bumper to bumper on the highway. Andrew's eyes darted around looking at all the people in their cars. An elderly couple in a sedan, a family of four in an SUV, a clearly pregnant mother with her son sitting right beside her. Most of them were looking towards where the sound of shooting was coming from. Most had fear and worry on their faces. Some looked at them with a bit of hope. They hurriedly ran off the off-ramp and onto Monterey Boulevard. At the three-way intersection in front of them, the one where Acadia Street went into Monterey Boulevard, multiple officers and a few guardsmen with a Humvee were laying down withering fire. Andrew fired his rifle as the lancefisher's head appeared. Since Acadia Street was an uphill road, the first thing that always appeared was the lancefisher's nose. A small mound of monster corpses were already forming at the top of the road. Because there were also houses on both sides of the street, it was the perfect choke point for funneling these creatures. A few minutes later. We need more reinforcements at Forrester Street. There's too much of them. Besides Andrew and Terry, Corporal White shouted into his radio. The situation on Acadia Street is stable. I can send a couple officers. White turned towards them. Andrew. Terry. I need you two to get into your cars and get to Forrester Street as fast as possible. Shit. Andrew's police car screeched to a halt. The lancefishes had clearly pushed past the mouth of the intersection. Officers and guardsmen were still trying to hold onto the middle of the boulevard. Andrew and Terry got out of their cars and opened fire while shielding themselves using the car doors. Although the car doors were completely useless if the monsters came barreling down towards them, it gave them a sense of safety. Terry shouted while shooting where the hell are those attack helicopters from earlier? I don't know. Reloading or some shit? It didn't take long for the lancefishes to notice two guys shooting them in their vulnerable sides. Three monsters turned towards them. Ah fuck. Explosions rocked the ground in front of them. An attack helicopter flew in a straight line down Forrester Street, rockets spewing out of it onto the monsters below. The sound of its minigun could then be heard. Fucking hell. They took their merry time to get here. Cheers and whoops rose out of the men on the intersection. Some even waved at the helicopter. 1635 June 18, 2020 CE. Interstate 280 near Daly City. 
a convoy of 16 Hums led by two LAV-25 sped down Interstate 280. In the lanes beside them, civilian cars crowded them. His squad commander, Sergeant Julian Shelton, commented on it. Good thing they kept this lane open. Eric looked over his shoulder. Couldn't we have used the Ospreys and flown over this? Something about them being needed to get more guys and stuff over here. The situation at the front is also not that clear at the moment so they don't know where we should be dropped off. On that note, we should probably slow down once we enter San Francisco. Don't want to run into one of those things. 1940 June 18, 2020 CE. 1120 Sun 48, 196 AE. Primapolis, Magus Imperium. In the throne room, magician officials lined both sides. Jimmy stood in the middle and Emperor Arstant sat on his throne. Does your nation need any assistance? The Magus Imperium would be glad to provide it. Jimmy shook his head. My government fears that these creatures may be preparing to land on the shores of the Mac Imperium. We would like to request your nation's assistance in defending against them once they do arrive there. Our country would only be able to provide limited support to the Makians and we fear that these monsters may overrun them. Arstant frowned. What sort of assistance? Boots on the ground. We are hoping that you will send your military to bolster and help the Magus. Rubbing his beard, the Magusian emperor contemplated the request. I am afraid that is not possible. To support a nation that had been our arch nemesis, and the greatest threat to our sovereignty for a hundred and twenty years would only cause an uproar in my court, my populace, and my soldiers. On top of that, these monsters may land directly on my country, requiring me to have the full might of my military available. We are certain that these monsters will not be landing directly in your country as they have only appeared in the seas facing the Mac. I do understand your first sentiment. But if these monsters trample through the Mac Imperium, who will be its next target? This is a matter of your country's own safety. You could prepare until these monsters arrive on your borders but the damage will then extend to within your country. Arston fidgeted around as if agonizing over the issue. Multiple expressions flashed through his face as he gave it thought. Give me some time to discuss this with a few of my most trusted officials. These monsters have yet to appear on this continent so it does not seem urgent. I will see what I can do. Thank you. Before you go, the offer for support to your country is still on the table. That is the least we can do for your country helping us defeat the Mac. Washington, D.C. A group of aerial photographs were laid down in front of Ronell. An aide explained what they were. Mr. President, we have spotted something rather massive 100 miles off the coast. We have some photos via satellite, courtesy of the National Spatial Intelligence Agency, and we are also sending a drone over it. Ronell held one of the photos in his hand while scratching his head. A giant dark red rectangle? We think it's some sort of massive radar system. We are detecting signals from it. It's likely what they have been using to detect and help shoot down our aircraft. 